Hello, and welcome to Section 6. In this section, we'll discuss users, groups, roles, access controls, LDAP, and SSO. In this video, we'll focus on users and groups. Before we get into users and groups, I'd like to give a brief overview of how users, groups, roles, and access controls fit together inside of ServiceNow. In the diagram below, we have three users, Steve, Bob, and Adam, who belong to the network group. The network group has the ITIL and admin roles. The ITIL and admin roles each contain one or more access controls. In this example, the ITIL role contains access to write to records, and the admin role contains access to delete records. Because the access controls are assigned to roles, and roles are assigned to groups, if a new user is added to the network group, they will automatically inherit the roles and access controls that belong to that group. So, to quickly summarize, access controls are assigned to roles, roles are assigned to groups, and groups contain one or more users. It's important to note that roles may be assigned directly to users. However, it's best practice to create groups and assign users to a group which contain the roles. Now we'll discuss users. A user correlates to one record in the sys user table. Users may be a part of zero or more groups and may have zero or more roles. Users have a number of out-of-the-box fields, and just like any other table, ServiceNow admins can add additional fields to the sys user table. We'll go over the user fields here in a bit. Users may also have delegates. So, for example, if an executive goes on vacation, then their secretary or delegate may approve tasks on their behalf. A group is a record in the sys user group table. You can think of groups as buckets which hold users who share a common purpose, such as project managers, system administrators, or change advisory board groups. Again, it is best practice to assign roles to groups and place users in groups rather than assign roles directly to users. Now let's walk through users and groups within ServiceNow. For the purposes of this video, I'll start by impersonating admin Adam. As a user in ServiceNow, there are a few ways to access your user record. You can either click on your name in the top left of the banner or you can click on the My Profile module in the Self-Service application. Both links will take you to the Self-Service view of the user record. The Self-Service view has a limited number of fields on the form. Since we are an admin, let's change the view to the default view. Here we can see a number of additional fields, as well as related lists at the bottom for groups, roles, delegates, and more. Let's provide an email for admin Adam and save the record. There is also a notification preferences link under the related links section. In this page, the user can add or remove notifications that they are a part of. If we go back and scroll down, there are two roles assigned to Admin Adam. Now let's walk through an example. We'll remove these two roles from Admin Adam create a new group called Administrators, 
add the admin roles to the group and finally add admin Adam to the group. We'll start by clicking the edit button under the roles tab. Here we are taken to a page where we can add or remove roles to the user record. We'll remove the two roles from admin Adam's user record and click save. Next we'll create a new group. We'll click the groups module and click the new button. We'll provide a name of administrator. You can also provide a manager, group email, and parent group if necessary. We'll click submit and navigate into the group record. From here, we'll click edit under the roles tab and add the admin and security admin roles. If we select the Group Members tab and click Edit, we can add a user, in this case Admin Adam, directly into the group. We can verify this by clicking on Admin Adam where we are taken to his user record and the roles and group match what we've just completed. Now if we click on Edit under the Roles tab, we, said, we see that there are no roles in the list. This is because Admin Adam does not have roles directly related to him. He inherits the admin and security admin roles because he is a part of the administrators group. So if we were to remove him from the group, we no longer see the two roles assigned to him. We'll add him back into the group and now create a new delegate for him. We'll have businessman Bob be admin Adam's delegate. And we'll provide a range of when we'd like this delegate rule to be effective. We can also see a number of options on the right. We'll leave them as is and click Submit. Now we can see the Delegate rule under the Delegates tab.